Okay, so we're moving to Adobe Premiere, and in this tutorial, I'm going to try and take you through from the very beginning, uh, opening the program and setting it up, um, to the very end, exporting your finished product. Um, so you'll have to go to Start Menu and then find the Adobe Suite, and then you're launching Adobe Premiere Pro CS6. I have mine in my dock here. Um, while we're waiting for the program to load, I'm going to suggest that you guys try and change this video over to 720p at the least so that you can read um, the kinds of things that I'm clicking on and the things that uh, that are important perhaps to see. So 720p would be good. Um, <clears throat> as the program loads, it might take a little while at the school. It certainly does here at home for me. As the program loads, uh, there's just a few kind of technical or logistical things we need to know at the very beginning here. And uh, so the first thing that comes is our pop-up menu out of our dashboard here. You'll get a list of the projects you've worked on recently if you want to open them. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and select new project. Um, <clears throat> whenever you select a new project, you're going to get some options here, uh, general options for playback and those kinds of things. Um, but then uh, we don't need to change anything in there. What we do need to change, however, are our scratch disks. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to save mine just to my hard drive. Um, but you guys are going to have to capture all of these um, to the D drive. So you'll hit Browse, and you'll choose the D drive, your video drive here on each of the computers, um, because they have a lot more storage than your personal drives do. I think your documents only have a megabyte or two, uh, whereas the D drive should have half a terabyte. Um, so you'll have to change each one of these to your D drive, and that's where you're going to have to save your project as well. Um, so keep that in mind, um, and if you need help doing that, of course, please ask. Um, you can name your project right now if you want, so I'm going to call this one Premiere Tutorial, and then hit OK. The next um, is going to ask you, the next dialog box is going to ask you about settings for the videos that you're importing, and you actually don't need to worry about this at all. Um, just hit OK, and uh, Adobe Premiere will take care of this for us later, so don't worry about that. So this is our uh, basic window. Um, first thing I want to do is tell you guys uh, we have to remember to save to our D drive. It's just not going to work at all <clears throat> if we're saving, pardon me, uh, to our own individual network drives. Um, so save your project right away. You might as well file, save as. I'm going to save mine to my desktop, but you guys can navigate down here, find D, find video, and then save Premiere Tutorial. Um, Premiere Tutorial already exists. and save your project. Alright, um, that also helps because now it knows where to render things, but we'll talk more about that after. Here's a basic overview of the window, um, what you're seeing now. Um, down here is your timeline. We've spoken about this thing a few times in class. Um, this is where all of the building blocks happen. This is where you're dropping clips in. This is where you're playing back, which you're actually going to end up seeing um, up here. Um, in this canvas window, this is our kind of final preview. This is what's going to be our movie once our, you know, our audience gets to see it. This is the clip previewer. I'll show you that in a second once I import some files. It's basically where we can uh, preview our clips and also put effects on them, mix the audio, etc. Um, and then down here on the bottom, this is where our clips are going to go as we drop them in. Um, so that's going to be useful to know. Um, you'll see what happens when we import some files right away. Um, you can browse your entire drive on your computer through the media browser if you choose. Um, you can get info on each of the clips, etc. Um, and all of these are customizable. You can move all of these around. Um, you can grab any of these windows and uh, put them wherever you would like. Um, I don't suggest changing it too much, but if you want, um, you can resize any of these and uh, and really customize your workspace. <clears throat> if you don't like uh, any changes you made, or maybe you've made changes accidentally, you can just go up to Window, Workspace, and then Reset Current Workspace, and it's going to restore it back to the original, which I find the most useful right now. <clears throat> um, so um, the next thing I'm going to want you guys to do here is change your keyboard shortcuts. Um, uh, in this uh, Premiere Pro, one interesting thing is that they've changed all of the keyboard shortcuts to model a different program, Final Cut Pro 7, um, knowing that a lot of users were going to be coming from this program because um, Final Cut kind of tanked on their last, uh, their last version of Final Cut Pro. Um, so if you actually go into Premiere Pro and you go to keyboard shortcuts, you can change to Final Cut Pro 7. The default is Adobe Premiere Pro CS6. Um, choose Final Cut Pro 7. 
Um, I'm doing this because this is the editor I grew up with uh, over the last few years in my editing experience, and uh, I'm going to be using those shortcuts. I know them best, and I think they're actually the most um, intuitive. So change your keyboard shortcuts to Final Cut Pro 7. You can customize all of these later if you'd like. Um, I'm not really interested in that right now. <clears throat> so we've changed that. Um, and then let's import some files. So let's put some things in here, and let's see what... Uh, what kind of things this guy can do. So we're going to go to File, Import, and I have a folder here already um, with all of my uh, pieces for this project in here. Um, but what I'm going to ask you guys to do is just go and grab any clips that you have on your D drive, any uh, shots you have, any audio. So we're importing movies, audio, JPEGs, etc. into here. So I'm just going to select them all and import. And it might just take a moment depending on how many files you're importing and the size and all of that stuff. So now you'll see down in our browser here, we have a number of things that we can preview. This is an audio file, that's the waveform there. This is the JPEG, the still I put in, and then I have three clips in here. Um, this little preview window is very, very powerful. Um, one thing that I found really, really helpful is that you can actually scrub a clip and you can look through it just by hovering over it and you can see what content is in that clip uh, right away, which is really, really cool. Um, Final Cut Pro did not do that. So that's a really neat option. If you don't like this view, you can change it, of course, uh, to a list. Uh, but I find it actually really useful to see what kind of shots you have visually. Um, it makes the hunting and pecking for shots a lot easier. You can change the size of these um, just by grabbing this little toggle here. And that means you can see them a little bit bigger if you'd like to. Um, we'll just keep them small for now. And there are other pieces you can put in here, like you can add bins, for instance. Um, this bin, let's say we'll call it video. And if I wanted to drag all my videos in there, I could do that. Or you know, I could add a bin that was said, I don't know, stills or, or B-roll, anything like that. And I could add some bins. Um, you can create new sequences. This is a sequence. Um, you probably don't need to do multi-sequence editing. Um, but if some of the projects are getting really, really big, um, which I don't anticipate them to be, um, you can go ahead and actually create additional sequences uh, to edit in. So um, the next thing we're going to need to know um, is how to preview a clip and mark an, an in and an out. Uh, so if you double click on a clip, it's going to appear up here in this top left frame. And we can preview the clip um, by sliding this marker back and forth, which is actually super annoying if you have the sound on. But we can listen to it back. Or should it be my guitar? Uh, no, it doesn't. Matter. Stand up tall, higher than all of them buildings. Now, one thing I want to point out here, guys, is that this is pre-rendering um, a preview for you. Um, and the quality here might be set to full. And watch what happens if I set it to full. I'll try and play it back. Than all of them really choppy. It's asking your computer to do a lot. So make sure you're at least a quarter here. Um, I do that on both my preview and my final. Um, once I drop a clip, and it'll allow me to do that. Um, and that's just uh, because the computer is trying to, without having to render anything, it's trying to have to um, to show you what's going on in the clip. So I'll try and find an end point here. Um, so a point where I want to start the clip when I actually drop it in, because obviously we don't want to use the entire clip. There's stuff on the you know the front and the back of it that I don't want. So once I find a part that I like um, to start at, I hit I, and that's going to mark an end point, and then I can press play. And maybe that's where I hit O for out. I for in, O for out. And now I've actually marked this clip um, so that I'm only going to drag in what I actually want. So if you click and hold and drag down to this timeline, as soon as you let go, it's part of our movie now. Now, this is where I said at the beginning, you didn't have to worry about the settings for the video because Adobe Premiere is actually going to read the video and adjust to it, which is really nice. Um, you need to go here and decide to change sequence settings. If you don't do that, if you keep existing settings, your movie will not work properly. Um, you're going to call me over at the end when you try and export it and you'll say, what's going on, Mr. Hansen? And I'll say, I'm really, really sorry. You actually have to start from the beginning, from scratch. Uh, that's really important, a critically important step. Um, drop a video in first, one of the pr uh, principal videos you'll be using, and uh, make sure that that is asking you to change your settings, and then you do want to change them. You don't want to keep existing settings. All right, so um, that's dropping a clip into the timeline, and now you'll see if I play it back in my timeline, so if I come up to the clip here, and I play that, 
I'm hitting space, by the way, hitting space to play this. You can use all of these as well, um, but space is just as nice. That's the beginning of our movie, um, and that's what it's going to look like. You can change the length in the timeline um, by dragging or pulling it back. Um, on both ends of the clip for as much as you have, right? Um, you can also here, uh, I want to point out, change how your timeline looks in terms of zoom. So you want to see more of the detail. Um, Control plus or Apple plus on a Mac will move you in and Apple minus will move you out because maybe you want to see the whole timeline um, and maybe you want to see just one specific part. So Control plus or Control minus will zoom you in and out of your timeline. Um, make sure you change the size of your preview just so it runs a little bit smoother and if you want you can actually render this. This yellow bar means that it's not rendered yet. Um, here's a really important shortcut. Um, to render a clip so it'll play more smoothly you hold Alt and R and that's going to render your video. What's it, what it's doing is it's getting it ready for export um, and when you play it back now it's going to play much more smoothly. Um, this takes a lot of time um, uh, sometimes to render. So often I'll build a whole bunch and then I'll render. Um, one thing I'm going to remember though is I'm going to save right now. I need to save uh, because well I've done a little bit of work already. I've imported some files and it's important to save often. So remember that a good uh, keyboard shortcut once the render is done is going to be Control S uh, for save. You can go to File Save of course but you can also hit Control or Apple S just to save that project. And now, now I've rendered it you'll see it's going to play back slowly, more smoothly. Which is nice. Um, you'll notice a few things about audio here. Um, we'll get back more to that in a little bit later. Um, once you have it down here in your timeline, um, you can move layers, you can move it around where you want it. Um, you know, there's, there's a number of things we can do. We can move it around, obviously. Um, a really important shortcut as well, if you want to move just a little bit, um, it's the nudge tool. Uh, if I press just the left and right keys, it's going to move uh, my time marker in my timeline. But if I select a clip, like I have it selected right now, and I hold Alt, I actually move the clip one frame at a time. And so you'll notice here on the time marker that you have something before the seconds. You actually have, uh, this is your playhead position. Um, you have one up here and here as well. Um, you have here, you have hours, minutes, seconds, and then frames. And each frame, because we're working in a 24 frame um, second timeline, it's going to have, this will count to 24 before this changes. So it's like um, a little different than, you know, just minutes, seconds, hours. Um, but uh, can be really useful because sometimes you want to make changes that are just one frame at a time. And so I can nudge this clip just one frame at a time if I like by holding Alt and then the left and right keys. Um, let's talk a little bit about the tools quickly. There are a number of different tools we're going to want to use here. Um, this first one, the selection tool, is the most obvious um, to select different things in the timeline. It's one you use the most. Um, there are a number here I'm not ever going to use actually, so I'm not going to explain them to you. Um, the next really important one is your blade tool or your razor tool. Um, this is what you use to cut clips up if you wanted to. Um, so if I say wanted to put a, a change in a clip here, um, so I wanted to do something like, uh, like cut it in half, I just click on that and it now actually blades it and I could use the selection tool now and move different pieces of it around, which can be really useful. I just did Apple Z there, by the way, to undo, um, just to note there. I'll show you another way to undo in a second there. Um, you have your pen tool, which can become very useful. Um, for example, your pen tool, if you see this little yellow line here, uh, your pen tool can mark a point on the clip, and you can drag around. I know that's probably a little hard to see, um, but what I'm doing right now is I'm actually adding in a... Uh, a fade in and a fade out because this yellow line refers to the opacity of your clip. When it's all the way at the top, 100%, that means you see the clip um, all the way down to zero, which is just black. So what I've done with the pen tool is I've made four points by clicking on the line and then move those points. I can do the same thing with the audio too so that it can um, then move in and out smoothly. Um, and so we'll hear this back in just a second. I can just move that point over. Uh, I'll render it again. Uh, just so that we can uh, watch it back smoothly. And this will take just a moment. 
Um, and I'll tell you about the shortcuts for these things in a bit because you're actually going to move between the selection tool, the blade tool, and the pen tool quite often. You also have down here your uh, hand tool which is going to move your timeline and not clips and your zoom tool if you want to move in on certain things but I already told you um, control plus and minus will move you in and out. Um, so that should be okay. Um, so now if you see, just using the pen tool there, what I've done is I've added in a fade. Which uh, can be useful obviously for a lot of things. Um, to get rid of any of these, if you don't like them, you right click on them and you can just delete. Delete. And I could also undo, and I'll tell you more about that in a second. Um, because say I didn't want to do all that and I have to re-render it and that might be an ugly little process. Um, we actually have here uh, some options. Um, we can do uh, a little bit in terms of, I'm just trying to grab a little bit more of this here. It's a little awkward because you actually actually move some things around. Um, if you say made a couple of moves and you didn't like any of them and you wanted to move back, um, you can actually choose the history panel here. And the history panel works just like it does in Photoshop. Um, where now I can go back and choose um, where I want to go back to. It gives me a number of steps all the way to new slash open. Um, so I can go back into the history of my document here and I can go back to right there and you'll notice now I've gone past all of this stuff, um, which is really nice. <clears throat> so these were all about moving uh, the clips when I was nudging them. That's uh, undoing each of the nudges, but now I'm getting rid of these keyframes and keyframes is a fancy word. Um, or term when we're discussing um, points of interest in the clip um, wherein we're going to, what we did there, the points of interest we were looking at were opacity changes. So I'll just rebuild my timeline here. I could have just reset it using window reset. It's a little awkward then um, to go in between these tabs, um, but uh, very, very useful once you, once you understand how to use the history tool if you want to go back. So go back to my library here. And um, so here's some shortcuts for you. That's the next thing I'm going to talk about after the history tool. I uh, have some shortcuts for you. If you want to select the selection tool, you hit A on your keyboard and see how that's changed. If you want to select the blade tool, you hit B, B for blade. And now you'll notice that's selected, so I can cut things up if I'd like. Um, P, the pen tool. P, the pen tool, is going to move to that. So P for pen, which is kind of nice. Um, let me throw in another clip here quickly um, because I'm going to show you the next shortcut that you'd like to know. Um, the next uh, shortcut um, is N for snapping. Um, if you notice here, there's this little magnet tool, and that's kind of how it works. It kind of magnetizes clips to one another if you have that selected. So if I have it selected, a clip is going to go closer and then suck into it. Boom, just like that. Whereas if I don't have it selected, I can move freely in and out, which sometimes is useful. Um, other times, though, I find that if I don't use the snap tool, uh, I end up with black frames in between, like this, you know, in between clips. And they're not this exaggerated. They're not that exaggerated. Black frames aren't good for us. So N turns snapping on and off. Uh, you can use Z for the zoom tool if you want to move in and out of that, but you can also use, like I said, control plus and minus. Um, and uh, one of the things where I wanted to point out was that your window zooms can be changed as well. I typically just say it fit, uh, but later we'll actually see why we might want to go to a different zoom. So you can go in really close if you wanted to see some detail in there, or alternatively all the way out if you need to do uh, some movement, which we'll show you later, but fit is a good way to change that um, and a good way to edit. So fit on both of these and you can change both of those as well. So now that I have another clip in here, I want to talk a little bit about multi-layer editing. Um, basically what you're going to see here is, um, as we look at the clip, I'm actually going to pull in a different clip here, um, this one first. Um, if I pull this clip in, um, this is basically how multi-layer editing is going to work. Um, you can consider it as if you're looking down on a timeline. Um, you're looking down from the top, and what you're going to see is whatever is uh, the highest up there, whatever's on top. Um, this audio is going to be terrible as it overlaps. I'm going to tell you how to deal with that in a second. Okay. Um, one second here. So, um, just checking something. 
All right, um, so that's how the basic timeline works in terms of multi-clip editing. Um, I didn't mark an in and out on this. I could have, and I probably should have. Um, but uh, it's like looking down from the top and looking down. Um, so one thing you'll note there is that that's obviously a really ugly sound when you have the audio um, between both of them. And, uh, oh, by the way, these aren't expanded, but you can expand them if you'd like, um, just by hitting these little toggles here. I can collapse this as well, uh, depending on what you want to see. Um, so I am going to show you how you're here to unlink audio and delete clips, um, because we don't want the audio actually on a lot of stuff, especially B-roll and those kinds of things. All right, so I'm going to show you guys here how to uh, actually unlink the clips because, you know, often, as is the case with, say, B-roll, for instance, or if we're replacing audio because we've recorded it on another microphone, we we'll want to unlink the audio. And you can do it in one of two ways. You can right-click on the audio and then choose Unlink. Or alternatively, you can choose the clip and just hit Apple or Control-L. And that will unlink the clip and the audio. So now you can move them independently if you would like. But alternatively, you can just choose the audio now and delete it, which is actually what we want to do. So I'm going to unlink that with Apple L. It's much faster to know the keyboard shortcut. And now I'm going to start actually kind of, you know, building together a little story, maybe, of Graham getting a guitar, and then he's going to play it a little bit. And now we're uh, going to get a nice shot here. It's going to move a little bit. So one thing you'll note there is that um, I had it panning to the left and then to the right, and so as a result, um, I decided to move my in there. And you can move your in and out while you're watching back, and you can do it um, individually, frame by frame, by using your arrow keys. You can do it and uh, get very specific with that. But I'll drag that in here, and I can put it on any layer I want. You know, you can put it up even higher if you'd like. I'll just drop it in, delete the audio. And now that's all gone. So I could then go in, for instance, um, and say I could uh, pull in this audio clip if I want. You know, it's going to be, say, the soundtrack to our beginning of our documentary. And I'm going to fade it in as I fade in again. So I hit P for pen tool, um, fading in both of these pieces. I'll render it quickly. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about audio in a second here uh, once it's done rendering. Uh, but this is the basic building blocks of your timeline. Um, looking at pushing clips together, um, adding a soundtrack, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so again, these are things that I'm just going to ask you to play around with. <coughs> um, and uh, of course, I'm here to help, obviously. Um, but uh, a lot of this is going to come with a little bit of practice and a little bit of experience. And I know I'm going fast, uh, but hopefully that... Um, with the menu, you guys will be able to rewatch any parts that you want um, to work them out. So I'm going to move back to the beginning of my timeline. How come every time we touch feels like some... All right, two really great things happened there that I wanted to show. Um, number one, here, notice at the end of the clip, something really funny happens. Uh, this is one of the quirks of Adobe Premiere. It's doing a lot of work to preview video um, before it actually writes it. Um, notice here that when I'm playing, um, a really strange clip kind of blurts in here. Watch. Right at the beginning. Um, that's not going to happen when we, uh, when we actually export it. Um, Sometimes little phantom uh, images get kind of ghosted in there, um, but when you actually export it, that won't be in there. Uh, don't worry. Um, I mean, obviously look and see like, oh, do I have an extra frame in here or something? Is something weird going on? But if I look at my um, at my piece here, no, it goes straight to zero. So that's unfortunately Adobe Premiere just having you know a small little glitch or hiccup, but that won't come through at the end. And then let's talk about the fact that as I play back the audio, watch the audio meter here, it's peaking. Um, it's going into red, we don't want that. A couple of ways you can change that. Uh, using the selection tool, you can actually just go down to the yellow line on your audio and you could drag it down to uh, a pad 
So zero decibels is um, no pad, but you can pull it down to you know whatever you want. Minus three, let's try. Zero. Perfect, perfect, and that that's taking care of that. Every time we touch, Which is nice. Um, but at the same time then, um, there are other things you could do, um, like you can go into effect controls for instance, or you actually have an audio mixer up here, it was kind of hidden, if you'll notice there, um, it's kind of hidden right there, um, again you can make these bigger if you need to see other things, uh, but you also have a master audio right here that you could slide up and down. And you can do it by track. And what's really nice about Adobe Premiere is that you can do that in real time, which is really, really cool, which is pretty great. Um, there are also a few things in here. So say you're playing back um, and you have a number of tracks here. Uh, you'll notice we only have three audio tracks. Um, you can add more tracks at any time, by the way, um, if you right-click in here and just click Add Tracks. And it'll ask you how many you want and how many audio tracks. And it'll hit OK. And then, oh, boom, there's another one there. Um, and, yeah, you can add as many tracks as you'd like at any point that you'd like. Um, I'll just get rid of that because I don't need it, though. Um, so there are a number of things here going on. You can mute a track if you'd like. You can solo a track, meaning that if you had 15 audio tracks running for some reason, you could have just that track playing so you could listen back to it. And then this might be really useful for some of you guys. If you want to plug in a microphone and say you needed to do some narration, you can play your video back and actually use this, the R, um, to record. Um, you can record over top of a track, um, which is really, really great. There's also a number of effects in here um, that we could get into. Um, you know, I'll, I'll come back to this in a second. Um, so we have a little movie being built here. It's coming together. Um, maybe there's something we want to put in like a title, um, a text title. Um, Adobe Premiere, in case you don't have, um, you know, the kind of thing to render text, um, it has a title feature here where you can go title, new title. Um, roll is going to make things kind of well, roll across the screen and crawl across the screen. I never use those. I think they look really cheap and kind of kitschy. Um, I'm just going to go to default still, and a whole number of options come up. Oh, this is fine. It'll it'll know if you've already dropped in a video. It'll know what to do here. So just hit OK. And this kind of separate dialog box opens up, um, where we can go in here, draw in a text box, and test one. You know, you can put something like that in there. And this now is up to you guys to kind of play with and 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 fool around with. Uh, but you can change the font size by scrubbing here, clicking and holding, that's scrubbing. You know, um, you can change the, the text box size, obviously, if we need to. We'll just leave it for now. Um, that's why it's wrapping, though. Um, if you double-click, you can manually enter it, so 120, for instance. Um, you can change a number of things, though, like the leading, which is kind of a fun thing to change. I think this makes it look more big-time when you change the leading on something. Um, and you can change... Uh, the space in between lines just by scrubbing this value. Uh, you can decide to center it or right align it, anything like that. Um, you can choose different text styles down here. Um, a whole bunch of options in here. Some of the options I really like are like shadows, for instance. Put a nice little drop shadow in there. I'll change the color so you guys can really see it a little bit better. Um, but you can change you know, the size of it, the opacity of it, etc. And you know, you can get some kind of cool effects. That looks really ugly, but whatever. Good for now. Um, once you have everything, you know, you're pleased with, you can have little shapes in and all this kind of fun stuff. And whatever, play around, try and get something that looks good to you. Um, and then once you're done, you just close this out. And it will appear down here as a video that you'll just drag on top. And you'll notice that, boom, there it is. Um, you might want to move it, of course, um, which you can do by just having the selection tool and moving it. Uh, if you need to move it, you can just open it up again, move it to where you want in the frame, all the pieces of it. And you see it updating in real time over here. Uh, that's obviously a terrible place for it. Um, yeah, wherever. That test one looks terrible down there, but you get the idea. You can play around. Uh, but that's how you throw titles in there. I'm just going to leave that for now. I don't need it uh, at the moment. That's how you throw titles and text in, uh, which is good to know. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about here is effects. Um, if I select a clip, um, either in my viewer or in my timeline, 
um, and then I go over to effects it's in this uh, panel here so you might need to change the window size uh, to see it but you can choose effects there are a number of different effects you can throw on um, and this is a, an area where I'm going to ask you guys to play around a little bit I'm not going to go through all the effects um, but it's kind of broken down into four categories um, you have audio effects obviously um, these are a number of things that you can use to maybe fix up audio that isn't great um, you can put different filters on them um, you can equalize them if you know anything about that. You can add some reverb, you know, if you were doing something musical. Um, some studio kind of effects like flangers that change the sound of it. Um, Denoisers if you needed to try and crop out background noise, which is very difficult, by the way. Um, I have trouble with that. Um, filters that are going to allow more bass or alternatively more treble. Um, balance where you can pan left and right. All kinds of audio filters for your audio in there. Um, there's audio transitions. I really only use crossfades, um, but you can have a number of different crossfades um, that you'll see that if you drop in between clips can be very useful to fade in between clips. Um, I actually build my own crossfades with pen tools um, and just put in the audio on different layers. I build my own. Um, video effects, this is where there's a, just an absolute gold mine of things to go through. Um, so, you know, everything from color correction and a whole bunch of different color correctors in here um, to, you know, you can blur and sharpen clips. I wouldn't touch a lot of that. Um, keying, that's where you do chroma keying. So if you wanted to green screen something that lives in there. Um, Stylize has a whole number of different things you can put in. Um, and this, this gets a little wacky sometimes. Like if I drop one of these, yikes. Yeah, you know, but maybe... Um, you can use that for effect, but also note that there's effect controls here on each of them. So if you go to the top and effect controls, you can change the parameters. Um, so like, you know, how much it's actually being digitized and all that. And, you know, maybe that's for effect. It's, it's hard to say, um, you know, perhaps that's something that you could use. Um, I'm just going to undo that. I'm going to get rid of it. <laughs> um, but there's a whole bunch, there's a whole whack of different, um, pieces in here that you might find interesting. Uh, and then finally, video transitions, um, dissolves, um, and wipes and slides. I wouldn't use swipes and wipes and that kind of thing, but something that dissolves are kind of nice. And so to transition between, I usually again build my dissolves um, with the pen tool manually. Uh, but there are a couple effects I'm going to show you both. Um, for instance, here, um, I'm going to select a clip and select the shot I like in it, and I'm going to show you something kind of interesting. So let's go back to our uh, browser here. And I'm going to select a clip. I like the lighting in this one. I thought it looked really cool. Um, so I'm going to select a shot I like. And this is a really cool um, idea here. You can export a single frame. And it'll do that in high resolution and high def. Um, and this is really useful, say, if you want to make an Instagram, um, you know, uh, an Instagram post or a thumbnail for YouTube or something. Um, this is really useful. So you can export the frame. You can choose a number of different formats. Um, doesn't really matter. Let's just choose JPEG for now. Um, not the highest quality, but quickest. Um, and we'll find out where we're going to put it. Let's toss it on our desktop in my assets folder um, so that I know exactly where to go for it. And we'll call it uh, still one. And now I can come back and import that. I can import that. And drop it into my timeline and now it's on a video it's actually a still and I'm going to do something with this actually for you um, I'm going to take a look at this so say I have a video, a still, etc um, I'm going to show you now a really useful effect uh, for instance um, color correction is something I use all the time um, there are some other really um, important ones I should talk about here too actually really quickly effects like auto levels and auto contrast um, let's just see what that does to a clip when we drop it on Auto color, it's going to try and balance it a little bit better. That didn't do a great job, but you can go back and change it after. Contrast is going to, you know, um, blow some of the highlights and crush some of the blacks to make it seem more high contrast. Um, and auto levels, these are pretty great tools um, that can really quickly change a, f a piece of footage, make them look a little bit more uh, big time. Um, and you can go into effect controls on that clip and change any of those. Um, but I'm going to ask you to play with that and kind of figure out how that works. Uh, so back to the clip we were just working on. Um, I want to talk here about... Um, let me delete that key for a little bit more. It's there. Um, I want to talk about using maybe color corrector on this one here. I'll show you what that looks like. 
Uh, I always go into color correction. I use uh, color corrector three-way, three-way color corrector. So click, hold, drag over there. And now if I select this clip, um, this option has now come up. And this works really kind of intuitively. You can change the color um, by dragging this. So, you know, you can do it for effect. You can do it. Um, sorry, let me grab that. Come on. There we go. Um, you can do it for effect, and you can do it to, you know, make things cooler. So, for example, um, this is a little bit hot, it's a little bit orange. So, maybe I just slightly pull these all over to blue and they will become a little less warm. Um, but another thing that you can do here with this um, piece is you can actually completely change the saturation. So this is how you would go and actually change something to black and white. So go in, saturation down to zero, and you get more of that kind of black and white feel. Um, and as I take everything out, you can see it's turning to full black and white. Um, I like the kind of look you get sometimes um, if you play around with these values. And if you set these around to 100, you'll notice it kind of has that kind of lo-fi, kind of cool look to it. Um, but yeah, again, you can play around. Uh, let's just go straight black and white um, so that we can uh, show you one more effect here. Uh, I wanted to talk about the Ken Burns effect. So I'm going to render this really quickly. Um, I'm going to show you that Ken Burns effect where we're going to take a clip and we're actually going to move it around the timeline. Uh, I'm going to show you that in just a second here and a few things to consider. This is a uh, pretty boring little clip. If I hit play, which is really no fun uh, for anyone to watch. So here is how we're going to do the Ken Burns effect. Um, this is where we're going to change our zoom. I'm going to change it out to 10%. Okay, so I can actually see the entire clip. And I'm going to resize this clip. Um, to do that, you need to go into Effects Controls and you need to click on this little wireframe on motion and what it's going to do here is it's going to give me this wireframe where I can now change the size of a clip so I just click and drag the corner okay um, I click and drag the corner and now I am going to uh, go into motion and I'm going to uh, toggle animation so that I can now change position and scale. So I've made sure that I've chosen the first frame in the clip where I want it to move. Okay, um, I'm going to toggle position and scale on. The reason I made this bigger by the way is so that we had information so that as it slid across um, there would be sufficient information in it to actually have something come up and show. Now I'm going to go to the final uh, frame of the clip and I can move it manually here. Now you'll see an arrow. Um, that arrow means the clip's going to move from where it started to here. One thing you don't want to have happen is it for it to move on multiple axes or axes just a little bit here. Um, so you know maybe you're not sure if you got it just right. Um, one thing I actually like to do is slide the position, then scrub the position um, with the scrubber here, and then that I know that because this is the x-axis um, and this is the y-axis, but I know I'm only moving in one dimension, which uh, is obviously something that we. Uh, something desirable if we're trying to you know make an effect that looks nice and smooth and professional um, so now uh, I've done it so once again I click at the beginning of the clip um, I go in and I click position and scale and click the end of the clip where I want the motion to stop and move it to wherever I want it to go I'm gonna render it out quickly Okay, I'm playing it back here. Let's change the size Ooh, to fit. So uh, that effect happens really nicely, really quickly, nice smooth, easing transition. One thing to note is the resolution kind of took a hit um, because the resolution of a video can't really be changed that much. You'll notice it's a little blurrier, um, but with really high res pictures that can work really Okay guys, so I would hardly call this a movie, um, but at this point, um, assuming that we were say finished, let's talk about um, exporting and how to actually get this out of Premiere into a usable, um, uploadable file. Um, just like we mark ins and outs in the clip previewers here, you can mark ins and outs in your timeline 
Um, so we're used I and O here to mark ins and outs. We can use it on our timeline with our timeline selected. So I find the spot I want to begin at. We want a few black frames, so I'll mark in an I and let's play from there and see if that's good. Looks good to me. And then I go to the end of my project and I hit O. And now this is only going to render out um, exactly what I uh, what I just selected, and that will be my movie. And so to do that, now you go File, Export Media, or Control E or Apple E. And um, I have a preset built here, um, and we can save presets on your computers. Um, but the thing here um, to do to know is that you want the format to be QuickTime. Okay, um, let's change it to custom right now. And the format to be QuickTime, the codec you're going to use is Apple ProRes 422LT. Um, it'll give you the 1080p. You need to make sure your frame rate is at 23.976. Okay, that needs to be your frame rate um, because that's what our camera shot at. Um, and that should be good, actually. Um, the last thing to change here is it's going to ask you what source you want to use. If you use work area, it's going to render out the entire timeline, which might be hours depending on where you put things. Um, you want to change that to sequence in out. That's what we just marked, in and out. And now it's going to do just that. And we'll hit export when we're done. And that'll be our video. And that's uh, that's how we export our film, our movie. We hit export. And uh, it'll it'll export. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing maybe to point out is that what we could have done, let's just cancel this quickly. One thing we could have done is change the name of the export and where we're going to put it just to make sure we knew where it was. Make sure you guys put yours on your D drive and uh, that way you can find it easier. So those are some of the basic things you need to know about uh, Adobe Premiere. Uh, some of the things that are going to get you started in your editing. Um, so I hope you can have some fun and, uh, and yeah, I'm here to help. So it's time to start, uh, start figuring this out, time to start working with it.